Good morning, once again. I've been thinking about our practice this morning based on where we were on Tuesday. Thank you again to Tracy and Peggy who were also here. Our topic this week is Aparigraha. And that whole concept of loosening our grip on things like our possessions, including our perspectives, our opinions, our thoughts, where we hold on to things. A parigraha means non-grasping, like an open hand, like this. It also leads to an inner feeling of simplicity. For example, you have fewer possessions to keep track of. <laughs> you have fewer things to sort of coordinate or be responsible for if you have uh, a simplicity in terms of what you're owning or what your, even what your space includes. And that's why when we go to places where they have a Zen feeling, we feel more peace or tranquility. When something feels simple and clear, spacious, we feel more like harmonized. Um, so let's consider that as one way that we could feel into a parigraha. Where could we simplify? But not only the positive interpretation of simplifying, also where can we really loosen our habit of possessing things or acquiring things or um, storing things up <laughs> as an example. So please rest your hands in your lap. Let's take a comfortable and upright seat. And let yourself set aside that which is not relevant to your practice right now. And come into that which is essential for your practice right now. Sometimes we come to the yoga mat and we are experiencing parigraha, the grasping. We want to get something from the yoga practice. So we have an idea about what that's going to be as if you were sort of in a way squeezing every last drop out of a lemon to get the lemon juice. Sometimes we come and we have this idea about what our practice is going to be or how it has to Take care of the messiness of our life in an hour. Um, so just notice what you're arriving with and ask for your practice to help guide you, not in a habitual way, but in a wise and potentially fresh way. Come into the most subtle form of the ujjayi breath. So you can feel that hollow space in the back of the throat. Listen for the quiet sense of the whispering of the breath. You sustain that sense of smoothness for inhale and exhale. Trust that the whispering sound of the breath and the silence of the pauses, those will continue. 
Bring your mind's eye now to the place where the breath is touching the upper back of the throat. After it comes through the nasal passages, the breath touches on inhale, the back of the throat. So rest your attention right there. Keep your attention there, whether the breath is moving over that spot or you're in the pause where the breath is more still. So narrowing the aperture of where your mind is focused is a way of simplifying See what you have to could have tossed overboard or set aside to increase your wise concentration in this spot. Keeping that concentration, please raise your hands to your heart. And acknowledging that in the upper back of the throat, you've been resting your inner gaze. We're about to chant, and that's going to use the entirety of the throat. So see if you can stay with the sensations of the throat, even in chanting. And we'll chant Asatoma Satgamaya. Om Asatoma Sadgamaya Tamasoma Jyotir Gamaya Mrityodama Amritam Gamaya Om Atatama Sarkamaya Tamasoma Jyotir Gamaya Mrityodama Amritam Gamaya Om Asatoma Sarkamaya Tamasoma Jyotir Gamaya Mrityodama Amritam Gamaya Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Shri Guru Pyo Namaha Hari Om Okay, with your exhale, you may bow your head to your heart. Release your hands, open your eyes. So I chose that particular chant this morning because if you notice the upper back of the throat, when you say, Om Asatoma, 
you picture the upper palate, so the roof of the mouth is going up, and the upper back of the throat is also vaulted like that, the vibration of those sounds is influencing behind that region of your face, you're influencing the pituitary and then the pineal gland. And pituitary is one of those uh, stress response team members, the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis. When we get stressed, we rush into the hormones that those organs produce for us. So if you can have a sense of the vibration back there and imagine that you're calming down the pituitary gland and nourishing the pineal gland also, you could picture that the, they're sending messages to the hypothalamus and to the adrenals and asking for an overall like slowing down and recalibrating and then regaining perspective on what you're facing. It's also likely that when we have a high level of HPA, hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis, rushing the biochemistry through the system, it's likely that we turn to more primitive behaviors to manage that. And some of that could include holding on to stuff or things or protecting or defending. Like imagine that you've got this perimeter, you've got to defend it and all your stuff in there, including perspectives and viewpoints and held history or trauma in the body. So in that regard, when we do this, Om Hari Om, you're trying to send the sound into the upper back of the throat. Let me just check this. Okay, yes, interesting. Okay, yes, yes, that's great. Yeah, Susan, I think I can see that. I'm gonna to have to make this font bigger on the, um, the Zoom chat. So I'd like us to keep that in mind and to use this in parts of the practice today and think of it as the letters are A-U-M. There is a deliberate silence at the end. So it's A-U-M silence. And even when we were singing, Asatoma, it is an ah sound, like ah, the doctor is checking with the tongue depressor. Ah, Asatoma, it's not Asatoma, where it's more flat inside the mouth for this purpose. It's not that. Um, Okay, so please come up to standing and come into your jazz dance warm up pose. I think I might get some kitten traffic here in a moment. We'll see. So, in the jazz dance warm up pose, come down, take your hands over your knees. Let's put the gaze down and forward but lift the upper palate and the base of the skull. So you feel like there is a lift into the upper back of the throat actually. And come into the Ujjayi breath. You're gonna hear the sound of the breath and the silence, but try to keep your mind focused in the upper back region of the throat. Allow the breath to encompass the base of the spine, the pelvic floor, and upwards, of course, through the torso. I'm gonna ask you to consider for about three exhales to use the M sound during the exhale so that you're having a vibration for the exhalation. So let's inhale smoothly. When you place the lips between the teeth for that M sound, you make a hollowing in the back of the throat. 
It's the same shape for the ujjayi breath. One more time. Please rise up to stand and let's make the feet parallel. Reach back and interlace your fingers at the small of your back. Roll the shoulders open. Squeeze the arms back. You're going to open the chest and the heart. And then exhale, come forward and down. Relax the weight of the head. Energize your legs. And as you check in with the shape of the throat here, Use the ujjayi breath to make a hollowing in the throat and consider the shape that you would use in the M sound. And then I'd like us to try it for three breath cycles to use that M sound during the exhale. So of course at your own pace. And then shift your hands to your hips. Rise up to standing and step the feet into mountain pose. Let's place the feet to their hip distance apart and parallel. You raise the right arm up with your inhale. And hold the right wrist with the left hand. Exhale, side bend to your left. And you can rest your head against your left upper arm. And try to rest your head in a position where both arms are straight. And you have a sense that the back of the throat is still open or hollow. Root down into your right heel and make that rooting from inside the right low belly. Exhale, rise up to center, stretch both arms towards the ceiling and hold your left wrist with your right hand. Reach up and arc over to your right. And in arcing over, again, you can rest your head on your upper arm, your right upper arm. But do it with both arms straight and root down into your left heel. Smooth exhale, rise up to center, release the clasp of the hands overhead and come to mountain pose. And so we're going to be moving through lateral bending, forward bending, and trying to get the ayayas worked out. 
I'd like you to take a wide stance again. And this time come down with two blocks. Place your blocks so that they're out for your hands. Reach back with both hips. And then keeping the left foot parallel, turn your right foot just about 45 degrees out to the right. And draw the right hip back and towards the left hip. So you're gonna swoosh the hips a little bit over to the left, just as far as they go. And you may sense that your body feels like twisting the upper back to your left. Go ahead and look under your left upper arm if it's comfortable to do so. So we just turn the right foot about halfway out and the swish of your hips to the left. You might also feel your right hamstring or your right inner thigh. There is an inclination for the spine to twist to the left and you can follow that to the extent that it's comfortable for you. Come back to center with your head and your torso. Turn the right foot in to be parallel with the left. Turn your left foot 45 degrees out. Slide your hips to the right. And you may find that you have this inclination to twist the spine to the right. You could look under your right upper arm. It's possible that the back of your head rests against your left upper arm. They may be touching and that is okay too. Now with the breath going through the back of the throat, let's exhale, come back to center, make the two feet parallel and now walk your hands to the right. Keep the feet and the hips centered and stable and draw your left hip back to stretch the left side waist to come into that region of the body, left side waist, left side of the diaphragm, the intercostal muscles on the left side. And let's do three times the M sound. So three breath cycles here and breathe in smoothly. One more. And walk back to center with your blocks and walk over to the left side. and draw the right hip back. So the hips have stayed fairly symmetrical and centered. You may notice the stretch along the right side of the torso or even the right outer hip. And let's do three breath cycles with the M sound for the exhale. Mm. One more time.
Walk your blocks back to center. Come into the Ujjayi breath. And walk your hands back to your hips. And please rise up to standing. Turn the left heel out and turn the right foot directly out to the right. Okay, join your hands together. It's possible that you can feel some uh, vibration in your face right now. That's okay. Just think of your, you're giving this nourishment to your stress response team. You're just telling the pituitary, hey, it's all right. We're not right now facing an emergency. So inhale, sweep the arms wide. And exhale, come down to warrior two to your right. Hold the gaze steady and the ujjayi breath steady and put your attention in the upper back of the throat there. Okay, close your eyes, touch your left hand to the base of the skull and remind yourself to lift right there at the base so your head is floating on top of your spine. And stretch the left arm back out. And imagine the place in you that recognizes there's nothing to grasp for. There's nothing to hold on to firmly with. We don't need to be caught up in craving or clinging. Turn the palms face up. And then inhale, rise up to center, hands to the heart. Turn your right heel out and your left foot directly to the left. Inhale. You may close the eyes and come down to warrior two. If it's helpful, touch the base of your skull with your fingertips and remind yourself to give a little lift right there. Stand steady between the forces of grasping and greed and the force of aversion or resistance. Remind yourself nothing to acquire right now. Nothing to hoard or possess or grasp for. I'll straighten your left leg, bring your hands to center, turn your left foot in, make the feet parallel. And let's come back down for a moment into Prasarati Padottanasana. Reach back to interlace your fingers. Squeeze the shoulders back. Now, as you inhale, glide your heart forward, make it like a little bit of a back bend. And then exhale and deeply bow towards your legs. Inhale, rise up to standing. Release your hands and please step into mountain pose. And let's take notice. What is the influence that the practice is having? What is your relationship to needing something more, wanting or craving something more? Let's step into Surya Namaskar. We're gonna be using Parva Kanasana, which we focused on Tuesday on a variation of that pose. And so uh, thanks for bringing your hips to class. Let me scooch these things.
you may step to the front of your yoga mat and come into mountain pose here. Bring the hands together at the heart. Okay, let's come to the ujjayi breath and with your inhale, take the hands down, raise them up. When you come down to chair pose, please use the M sound. Mm -hmm. Inhale, rise up, look up. Exhale, Uttanasana with the M. Mm -hmm. Inhale the heart forward. Left toes straight back. Inhale, rise up, crescent. And hold steady. This morning in crescent, I'd like you to bend the elbows. Hold the opposite elbow with the opposite hand. It makes a box shape over the head. Lengthen the sides of the waist as you keep the pelvis rooted and press into your right heel and left toes. With your next inhale, sweep the arms straight up, almost like you're taking off a t-shirt. And then exhale, arms wide, touch the blocks lightly. Inhale, step back to plank pose. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, plank. Exhale, seal pose. Inhale, lift up and look up. Exhale, plank. Inhale, downward dog. Okay, exhale, left foot forward. Inhale, rise to the crescent. Bend your elbows, hold the opposite elbow with the opposite hand. Lift up from your back waist and your side waist so you can sense you're not tipping the rib cage back like a crooked lampshade. With your next inhale, sweep the arms straight up. And exhale, big circle of the arms, lightly touch the two blocks. Inhale, step forward. Exhale, deeply bow towards the legs. Inhale, rise up. And hands to the heart. Inhale, raising up. We're going to use the M sound. Come to chair pose. Rise up. Uttanasana. Inhale, heart forward. Now exhale, left toes back as customary. Let's inhale, rise to the crescent, both arms up. And then pivot your left heel to the floor really slowly. So you come into Virabhadrasana one with the left heel. Aim your hips forward to the best of your ability. And as you're raising up, Cross the elbows to hold the opposite elbow with the opposite hand. Lift the rib cage, including the back of the waist.
Inhale, raise the arms up. And exhale, this time come forward and take the second block to the inside of your right foot with the first block. And we'll come down to the elbows like we did on Tuesday. Release the weight of your head. Listen into the upper back of the throat. And as you come down, you may be someone who could put the blocks a little bit lower, but the integrity of the legs is a must. So the right hip ought not sway to the right. And you wanna keep your right foot grounded and the right shin for right now should be vertical. We are temporarily closing or compressing the right hip joint. You reach back into the left inner heel. Now take your right hand behind your right ankle and snuggle your shoulder, your right shoulder down if you want to, it's not required, but you could snuggle the shoulder kind of inside the right knee and behind the right calf muscle. Relax the weight of your head. Maybe it touches the blocks. Maybe it doesn't quite reach. Okay, and then let's release by placing the two hands back on the blocks. Inhale, straighten your right leg. Come to your fingertips, come to your cat pose spine. Notice how the circulation goes down the right leg. Okay, and then place the right block on the outside and exhale, bend your right knee. Let's step into plank pose. Breathe in. Exhale, downward dog pose. Notice how your right leg feels relative to your left. Inhale, plank. Exhale, seal. And then you can choose upward dog or seal pose. Plank. And inhale, downward dog. Okay, exhale, left foot forward. Just coming first into the crescent. Raise up. And then hold steady as you take the right upper inner thigh, right inner calf, right inner heel to Virabhadrasana one. Cross the elbows. Raise up. Even as you're rooting down. With an inhale, raise the arms, keep the legs really steady. On the exhale, come over your left leg, touch the two blocks and place the left one on the inside. And come down to the extent that your left hip agrees to. Keep the left hip stable. So you've got the outer left hip, outer thigh, outer shin, outer heel. You may be someone who comes down a little bit deeper and that might not be you. You could place the blocks on a little bit lower setting. That's not gonna be for everyone. But as you reach back into the right inner heel, you can even gaze back in that direction so the head is relaxed. Take your left hand behind your left ankle and give a little snuggle of your left shoulder down next to, or even for some of you behind, your left calf muscle. Relax the weight of the head. And don't let yoga become a, a chance for the HPA axis to be like, oh my goodness, we have to send some, some perfumey chemicals through the brain right now. Okay, 
Yeah, we're going to release and rise up. So you'll place your two hands on the blocks. Let's come to the fingertips. Straighten the left leg. Come into your cat pose spine and notice how circulation goes down the left leg from your hip to your leg to your foot. And then place the left block on the outside of the right, the left foot and the right block where it goes. And please inhale to plank pose. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, plank. Come into the shape of seal pose. And then you get to decide. And exhale to plank and inhale to downward facing dog. Roll over your toes, please. Touch the knees down and come into child's pose. And we'll do this child's pose where you take one hand in the wrist of the other. What's the compression on the thighs, but also the inwardness for the mind. Please rise up to Vajrasana, Thunderbolt pose. And when you come to Vajrasana, rest your palms face down on your lap and just listen inside to sense, okay, where are you now with this human habit of grasping, holding on, possessing? And where we are, I'd like you to keep the blocks. We're going to bring a chair onto the mat in a few moments, but um, let's, from kneeling now, reach back to clasp your hands again. Okay, roll the shoulders back. Okay, if possible, your knuckles can touch the floor behind you, or maybe a block. Inhale to raise your chest and your heart. Then exhale, come forward and down, touch your hairline to the floor. Inhale, rabbit pose. Exhale, lower the hips to the heels. Inhale, raise up, come into a little kneeling back bend. Now fold forward, squeeze the lower abdomen, touch your hairline down to the floor. Inhale, rabbit pose. Exhale, lower your hips to your heels. Inhale, raise up, back bend one more time. And then exhale, Vajrasana. Rest your hands in your lap. I'd like you to sit on two blocks and make a little diamond shape of the blocks. We will need the chair shortly, but not at this very moment. So when you take this little seat, um, bend the knees and place your sitting bones just inside the two blocks. So you're sitting down in this little bitty valley, as it were. If you roll back, you're going to feel the corners of the blocks pressing near to the 
the tenderness of some of the muscles that go into the sacrum. Right. Okay, then take the left foot under and reach the right arm forward. Try to snuggle down to the inside of your right knee. So based on your body proportions right now, your knee is gonna be higher than your right shoulder or about the same height as, or maybe lower than. As you snuggle down, wrap your right arm around your right shin. You can walk the right hand back. So in my case, I'm putting my right hand on my block and my hand is facing up towards the ceiling. And we do have this compression against the right upper inner groin and the right hip joint. Okay, and then rise up to sitting. You've got your blocks there. As you come up to sit, take the right foot with the left hand, raise it up. Let's take the right hand to the inside of the right heel and sit up tall. So hopefully if the pelvis has a hard time being upright right now because of your hamstrings, then bend your right knee. And glide the right leg out to the side. So the sitting bones are still between the two blocks. As you hold, with your right arm to the best of your ability, straighten your elbow, lift your heart and make a little back bend. Notice the right side of the neck, the chest, the throat. And then bring your head to neutral to sort of normal and bring the right knee and the right foot down. Let's go back to squatting between the two blocks. Okay, so the sitting bones drop down to the inside edges of the blocks. If you roll back, you'll feel the corners of the blocks pressing into those muscles, a little bit like a massage. Okay, take the right foot to the inside and reach the left arm. You're gonna come inside the left thigh, inside the knee reach forward. You can wrap the left arm around behind and you may place the back of your left hand. In my case, I put the back of my left hand on the block where my hip is also sitting. And you are compressing the upper inner thigh and the hip joint. It's momentary, but it's real. And then raise up to sitting. Lift your left foot. You can take it with the right hand to start and then take the left hand to the inside of the left heel. Again, if it's hard to have your arms straight or to have the pelvis upright, please bend your knee. It's, a, it's appropriate to bend the knee when needed. Open the left leg a little out to the side. Even if the knee is bent, you can still open it out to the side. They lift up so the pelvis is upright, the chest and heart. We're gonna come into a little back bend right here. Bring your head upright, keep the left arm strong, bend the left knee and take your foot back down and come to your squat. You're squatting between the two blocks. Let the mind get quiet so the sitting bones can descend. This is a position that relaxes the pelvic floor, particularly when you bring the knees in, so they're about hip distance or shoulder width, you're asking the pelvic floor to stretch a little bit from center left to right. Okay, now please get your chair and 
You can keep your two blocks. Place your chair on your mat. I come down in just a moment to work with what we've been doing. So when your legs have that compression and then decompression, now the circulation is getting resumed. That's a wonderful thing. You can thank your circulatory system. Let's put the two blocks so they're not going to be in the way as you come down. And then lie so your hips are here and your shins go up on the seat of the chair. I'd like you to lie close enough to the chair that you can hold the feet of the chair with your hands. Let you know where that is. And then reach, hi, Mama Kitty. Hi. Oh, it's Papa. Hi, Nakula. Thanks for coming in. You pushed the door open. Okay, let's place the two blocks on the medium setting like a little diamond, like a little triangle like that. <laughs> okay, and that's gonna go against the insides of the sacrum. Tuck the shoulders under, like supported bridge pose. and take the legs up to candlestick pose. Now roll the shoulders under and the shoulder blades in against the heart. Allow the edges of the blocks, it's right there next to the edge of the sacrum. So that's an opportunity to release tension where muscles and connective tissue meets up with the sacrum. I'd like you to bend the knees, place your feet on the chair firmly, raise the hips up, put the blocks away so the, uh, to the side, right and left, so you can hold the toes of the chair, and come up to supported bridge pose, a high version of bridge pose, also called supported shoulder stand. Scooch the shoulders under. Notice now that the throat is compressed temporarily and the pelvic floor is toned. Use the strength of the arms to press down. And then exhale and start lowering your hips down, take the two blocks, make them flat so that when you come down, you're gonna rest your hips right there on the edges of the two blocks. So the sacrum is levitating between the blocks. Tip the chair with your feet and knees. Take the arms out, close the eyes. And now I'd like you to just watch as your body does this, that the lumbar spine is gonna also hammock a little bit towards the floor, releasing myofascial tension there. The pelvic floor should feel like it's able to relax. And so, the case is also with the upper palate and the back of the throat. But these three regions where there's bandhas are able to be more restful in the release of that pose. So momentarily bring your attention to the pelvic floor, invite it to relax, to be at ease. And do the same in the inner belly and the place where your sacrum meets your lumbar spine. It is okay if you still feel that the, the spine is rolling down towards the floor. And bring awareness to the throat and let that also be spacious, open. Not excessively open, but not closed.
you rest your attention in the upper back of the throat and just keep encouraging it to be relaxed and spacious. You will be having an influence on the other bandhas as well. Camera just turned off. I will set it so that you can see me again in a couple minutes. Just a moment. Camera will only turn itself off based on temperature. But since you're in Shavasana, you don't need to see anything. Three bandhas to keep becoming more and more relaxed. Do that by just resting your attention right there in the throat. A moment, a deep confidence, deeply rest, a deep confidence that you need not possess, acquire, hoard, or hold on to. deeper ease, nothing to hold on to, nothing to grasp for.
be deep mental quiet. In the mind quiet and at ease just lightly wiggle your fingers your toes let the chair down if you tipped it now bring your knees towards your chest with the blocks still under the sacrum you're going to get a little more myofascial stretch across the lower back And you can put the blocks out of the way so you're easily able to roll down to one side. Up to sitting or kneeling. Come back to your seat. Make sure it gives you enough support to be mentally and physically still. Put your attention right there in the upper back part of the throat, imagining we can have an influence on the brain, a beneficial influence, even at the pituitary and the pineal glands. Raise the hands and come into Brahmari for three breath cycles. You're gonna close the ears firmly with your thumbs, two fingers over the eyelids, the index fingers just above the eyebrows. Breathe in smoothly. Rest your hands back in your lap and we'll sit in quiet. Notice the influence even from three rounds of Brahmari.
very natural for your attention to come up to the third eye or the sixth chakra rather than keeping it in the back of the throat. Rest in this quiet. Apadigraha makes it more easily understood. In Brahmacharya, you would naturally respect the vitality in life, in yourself and others. Naturally, asteya is understood. You would not take that which isn't yours. Naturally, there's a simplicity that leads to satya, being more deeply understood, it's truthfulness. Adigraha deepens our commitment to ahimsa. Everyone, please raise your hands to your heart. Thank you for being here. Namaste. Let's close our recording.